Hello everyone, my name is Daria, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to try very hard to not cry while talking to you guys about the new Heartstopper adaptation on Netflix. Emphasis on the word try because I already feel very vulnerable and very emotional. So about a week ago now, I log into my email account and find a very intriguing message sitting there waiting for me from Netflix. A Netflix rep very kindly reached out to me and said, hey, have you heard of this little show called Heartstopper? Do you maybe want to watch it ahead of its premiere date and post a review of it on your channel? And I'm pretty sure I replied and accepted within the hour because first of all, it's Netflix. Second of all, it's Heartstopper. Third of all, do I need a third of all? I don't think so. So at this point, I have watched Heartstopper all the way through three different times. And I also cried three different times while watching it. Exhibit A, this was me after watching the final episode for the first time. And then Exhibit B, this was me during a rewatch. <laughs> I'm rewatching Heartstopper. <laughs> no. Oh, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> I'm just so I will specifically tell you like what scenes made me cry in the spoilery section, but yeah, just know that my tear ducts and I went through it. So it turns out I just assumed that all of you knew what the show was about when you clicked on this video. Silly assumption for me to make. Let me go ahead and explain the perfection that is Heartstopper. So for those of you who are unaware, this series follows a young teenage boy named Charlie Spring. He is in a secret relationship with a guy named Ben at a school. We don't like Ben. That is all that you need to know. We do not like Ben. But then he starts to develop some feelings for a guy that he's sitting next to in class named Nick Nelson, who is the popular guy at school, the rugby king. Everybody loves him. Everybody knows him. He and Charlie start to become friends. And then maybe eventually, kind of, I don't know, more than friends? Heartstopper started its life as a webcomic, and it still is a webcomic. You can read it on Webtoon. But then it became so popular that there were published volumes, and now, of course, a Netflix adaptation. Now, here's the thing. Even before receiving this email and this opportunity, I'd heard of Heartstopper. Of course, how could you be on the internet and not hear about it? Also, one of my good friends, Kat, from Paperback Dreams, maybe you know her. And if you do, maybe you also know that she's, you know, a very casual fan of Alice Oseman and the Heartstopper universe. Look at, oh God, it's blue, I can't even know. So obviously I knew about this series and I planned on getting around to it and definitely reading it before watching the show. The same day that I received the email from Netflix, I just powered through every single volume. And then I logged onto the Webtoon app and got up to date with the newest releases. And you know, I do not believe that violence is the answer, but I truly wish that I could go back in time and smack myself for not reading these books sooner because I have never in my life had this kind of like emotional visceral experience to a bunch of squiggles and drawings on a page. If you're already a fan of Heartstopper, I feel like I don't even really have to explain myself. Like, you get it. I care a lot about Nick and Charlie. I care a lot about that whole group of kids. I really wish that I could crawl into that comic <laughs> and protect these kids, but I can't. All the emotions that the comic elicited in me, joy, heartbreak, sorrow, understanding, sympathy, comfort, that's a huge one. All of those feelings, they were only reinforced like tenfold after watching the show. I want to start off and give my general impressions of the series, which is that it really was just verbatim the comic almost. But a lot of the characters and a lot of the storylines were just expanded and given a lot more depth. There are so many specific lines and scenarios that are lifted straight from the comic and delivered beautifully, I might add. What I really love and appreciated about the show is that we got to see so much more of the main cast of characters outside of Nick and Charlie. So Tara, Darcy, Tao, and Elle in particular. The show will often flip back and forth between the girls' school and the guys' school. So we see a lot more of Elle, Tara, and Darcy and their experience at Higgs. We especially are following Elle as she is going to this girl's school for the first time, trying to make friends, trying to find her place there, and, you know, missing her friends. Elle is a character that I have always loved, but in the comic series I feel like she does play a more minor role, but in the show her role is expanded so much more, and I just love that. And throughout the show there are so many, like, callbacks 
to the comic series. For example, a lot of times you will see like actual panels on the screen. Throughout the show there are constant like flower doodles and of course the classic Heartstopper leaves will pop up now and then. I don't want to spoil like the context of how they show up, but they show up let's say in really important intimate romantic moments and it's just such a wonderful callback to the comics and something that I know I loved and I'm sure that like diehard long-term Heartstopper fans are just going to adore. Another small detail that I love, and this show is really just about the details. There are so many Easter eggs and just little references to the comics throughout the show that I know every single fan is going to love, but the one that I really enjoy in particular is the fact that every single episode has a differently stylized title card. I really couldn't pick a favorite. All of them I just adore. When it comes to the cast and their performances, I can just say that across the board every single one of them knocked it out of the park. Not only do they like physically embody their characters so well, they just they are their characters, every single one of them. It really feels like all your favorite characters have just lifted right off the page. Okay so now let's talk about Nick and Charlie. The romance at the heart of the show, both of them individually and both of them together, are the beating heart of Heartstopper. Not to sound cheesy, but it's true. And I have to say that Kit and Joe just absolutely carry this show. They're both phenomenal. The things that they can do, the range of emotion that they can both express with just their eyes. Kit Connor as Nick in particular, that kid, oh gosh. He is talented. When it comes to Nick in the show, it is really all in the eyes. It is all in the subtlety of his expressions, the anxiety, the vulnerability, all of it is there just in the small movements of an eyebrow, a subtle shift in his expression. Like it's just, it floors me. Every single time I rewatch the show, I just find myself just looking at Nick Nelson trying to see like, okay, like how's his expression gonna shift when someone says this particular line or when, you know, Charlie does something in particular and you sort of see this look of like awe and adoration sort of come across his face and at the same time, just like intense panic at, you know, what are these feelings that I'm feeling right now? Like, it's just, it's just incredible what Kit Connor does. I think that if you forced me to pick like one actor that I think stole the show, it would have to be him. But that's not to say that Joe Locke doesn't bring it because I cannot tell you, you think that you're protective over Charlie Spring in the comics? You have no idea. You have no idea. That's a baby. I don't know what else you want me to say. That is a baby. That is my baby. The thing about Charlie is that when he feels an emotion, he feels it big, okay? He feels things like tenfold compared to other people. And yet at the same time, he tends to sort of just like keep that locked inside. And Joe Locke just did such a great job portraying that. And he nails the sunshine baby of it all, of this role. What really hurt me and really got to me about Charlie in the show is that there are so many moments where you quite literally see his mind working against him and his insecurities convincing him that he's not worthy of affection, of love, of respect and attention. You see him look back on certain events and things that happen, especially things that happen with Nick when their relationship is progressing. And Charlie will misremember those events and he, his mind will warp them into something negative and hurtful when the events didn't actually happen that way. And it's so, it's just so hard to watch as someone who cares about Charlie Spring and only wants the best for him. So it kind of seems like I'm already going down the list of characters, so let's continue with that because next I want to talk about Tao. Now Tao is a character that I am very attached to. Even in the comics, he was the character that I was always looking for anytime he showed up. I was just overcome and so excited. So I was very much looking forward to Will and his portrayal of Tao and he did not disappoint. I feel like Tao in the show especially is a very complex character. Even when he's doing things and you're frustrated with him or angry with him, you just like always understand him and you can always see his perspective and that is what makes a great character. Not only is the writing of Tao's character so great, but the way that Will portrays those complex emotions and the, you know, almost extreme protectiveness that Tao has over his friends, especially Charlie. Will just brings that to life in such an incredible way. This is like the non-spoiler version of this review, so I won't say much more, but what Tao does and the, the decisions that he makes, the way he handles 
the whole thing with Nick and Charlie, especially at the start. He made a decision that was understandable based on the information that he had at the time, is what I will say. Also, he's my comfort character and my lovable idiot, the overprotective friend, and I get that. I think I really, I vibe with that about Tao. Next up we have Elle, and I kind of already talked about her a bit, but like I said before, I love that we sort of get to know Higgs, Tara, and Darcy like through Elle's eyes. She's going into this new environment and, you know, she's just trying to make friends, figure out where she belongs. She's left behind really the only friends that she's ever known. I have to say that one of the biggest highlights of this season was getting to see Tara and Darcy and their blossoming friendship with Elle and just seeing the way that they really like take her under their wing and try to make her feel comfortable and just at home at Higgs. And another thing that I really liked that was a bit of a change from the comics to the show is that they really established the romance between Tao and Elle earlier on than in the comics. Now in the comics it's always kind of this like running joke that Tao and Elle like each other but won't do anything about it but in the show you get a lot of scenes with just them together, having fun, talking things out, sharing their emotions, and the romance is really just, it's just really present from the start. Tao and Elle, both individually and together, they have like a very, very special part of my heart, and I love that we get to see their romance sort of blossoming earlier on. Next we have Darcy. That is my girl. I love Darcy. <laughs> Every single time she opens her mouth, she always says the funniest shit. 90% of the time that I was laughing watching the show was because of Darcy. I love that she just says whatever is on her mind. She is so intuitive, so in tune with other people and what they're thinking and feeling. Darcy is also responsible for one of the funniest and best moments in the entire show, in my opinion. It's very small and I don't want to spoil it, but basically the situation is that Tara and Darcy are in a room alone together. They hear someone yelling for them. And then Darcy says like a word. I won't say what the word is, but I laughed. <laughs> I definitely laughed. Now that we've talked about Darcy, it is only right that we talk about her girlfriend, her better half, Tara. I love Tara. Ever since I met her in the comics, just that's my baby. I could probably say that about every character, but it's true. Now in the show, we actually get to see Tara and Darcy sort of become public with their relationship, which is not something that we saw in the comics. If I'm remembering correctly, I believe that Tara and Darcy, like it was already established that they were girlfriends. But in the show, we see them go through the process of coming out publicly. And for Tara, it's especially difficult because at the same time that she's saying she has a girlfriend, she's also telling everyone basically that she's a lesbian. And it's hard. She deals with a lot of just like horrible homophobia and just bullying and just gross people. Gross people with gross things to say and I wanted to fight them. I did. I love that we get to see Tara and Darcy together, that we get to see more of them, we get to see them interact with Nick and Charlie and all the other characters. Like we just get so much more. That's what I'm saying. Like in the show it's just the comics but more. Do you get it? It's just so good. Next we're gonna talk about Isaac and I honestly don't really have a lot to say about him. He was very quiet. Like he didn't really say much throughout the entire show. He mostly just like existed to like read in the corner and I'm gonna be honest I was mostly like excited to see Isaac because every single time he would pop up with a new book and I'd be like oh like you know what's what's he reading. Next we have Tori. My best big sister. My best girl. She would just pop up all the time. Just like a phantom. Just popping up behind Charlie at every single moment where she was needed, just giving advice. It was just great. Finally, let's talk about Harry and Ben, who I lumped together because they suck. That's really the consensus. I mean, we knew this going into the show that Harry and Ben suck and God, getting to see them on screen, whoo, it was not good for my health or my blood pressure because every single time they were on screen, I had to like pause and gather myself just so I could deal with the BS that came out of their mouths. There's a rather iconic moment, I don't think it's really a spoiler, in which Harry finally gets the punch that he deserves and it was so, so great to see. No hate to the guys who play Harry and Ben. I mean, obviously they're super freaking talented because they viscerally made me hate their characters and that takes talent, my friend. Finally, we're going to talk about a character that I feel like will be a bit controversial, Imogen. I think all of us can agree that Imogen can be very cringy. And I think the reason, at least me personally, that I found her so like cringy is because I remember doing stuff like that. I used to do the wildest, most insane, just like why would you ever think that that was anything other than painfully awkward? I used to do that kind of stuff. 
trying to get a crush's attention. There's one conversation in particular that she has with Tara and Darcy that I think goes beyond cringy. Like it's just bad. Every word that came out of her mouth I was like Imogen please stop. But in the end the way that her character sort of wrapped up I don't know like I don't hate her. I don't love her. I understood the purpose that she served and I'm not mad at it. I just like have a feeling that a lot of people are going to really really despise her simply because she kind of sort of gets in the way of Nick and Charlie a bit. Except not even- she doesn't even really do that because I don't want to spoil but it all gets solved and it's not really like her fault the things that go down and you know she's not mean or bitter or horrible about it. Just ugh okay final word on Imogen. Yes she's cringy. Yes she can be a bit annoying but I get it. And I can't totally hate her because low-key I used to do some of that same stuff. Except for the conversation with Tara and Darcy. That was just- that was- I can't defend you on that one. Sorry Imogen. So the final thing I want to talk about in this non-spoilery section, the final thing I really want to emphasize and leave you with is just how much comfort this show brought me. I watched it and I, I don't know, like I just felt this supreme kind of warmth. Getting to watch these kids, especially Nick and Charlie, getting to watch them discover more about themselves, about who they are, not even just in terms of their sexuality, but just about the kind of person that they want to grow up to be, the kind of people that they want to have in their lives, the kind of people they want to surround themselves with, getting to see them fall in love. It's special. It was a really special show and it was so comforting and joyful and even in the moments where things were hard and it was difficult to watch these kids struggle and go through pain, there was just still this this overwhelming sense of joy. I don't know what else to say. Like that, that really just like is the feeling of the show. I think I especially, oh god, <laughs> Sorry, I felt, ooh, uh, okay. I think I am especially just so thankful and so excited for all of, you know, the young adults, the adolescents, the 14, 15, 16 year old teenagers who get to watch this show and feel that sense of comfort. And I think feel it even more than I do because this show is really for them. I'm just so excited for all the gay kids, the trans kids, the bi kids, all of them who get to see this show and see this representation and just, I don't know. I hope it brings some comfort. I know it did for me. I'm just glad that they have it. I'm glad that it's out there and that it exists. Now we are on to the spoilery section. Obviously, if you have not watched the show, do not watch this bit. But if you have, hi, welcome. How are you? Not good? Okay. I figured. It's a lot. Let's talk about, oh god, what do we want to talk about first? There's so much to talk about. First of all, Olivia Coleman? Olivia Coleman. Olivia Coleman. Are you joking? Are you joking? Every single scene with her in it, especially that final scene in episode eight, that scene made me cry. Like I, it was just ugly crying, just horrible, ugly crying. Speaking of times that I cried, let me go ahead and go through the list of the scenes that made me bawl. So I already mentioned uh, the scene where Nick comes out as bye to his mom in the final episode cried like a baby. The other scene that made me cry was when Darcy and Tara kiss at Harry's party and then Nick sees them and then you just see like this cascade of rainbow around them and it just I oh I lost it. I lost it. In fact I can't watch that scene without at least tearing up just a little bit. The next scene that made me cry was it was actually during a rewatch. I was rewatching the scene after Nick and Charlie kiss for the first time and Nick shows up to Charlie's house and then Charlie starts apologizing and just his insecurities really get the better of him in that moment. I was ooh it got me so bad. I <laughs> was a mess. That second clip of me crying Crying, that video is from when I was re-watching that scene. Next thing I want to talk about, this is going to be like so out of order and all over the place because I just like feel like I need to exercise a demon right now. Oh every single time Ben opened his mouth. Oh especially that scene after uh the movie theater where he follows Charlie out into the parking lot and basically says like who's gonna ever want to be with you. Oh it oh it mm, I'm an adult. I cannot wish bad things upon a child but that's all I'm gonna say. I was so so proud and so happy in that final episode when Charlie stood up to him and just basically said I'm a better person than you. Stop treating me badly just because you don't like yourself. Incredible. So proud of Charlie. Such a great moment for his character development and just such a great way to stick it to Ben. Next let's talk about Nick and just how attached I am to this boy. Like I don't think you understand. When there was a close-up of Nick's eyes while he was like searching like the am I gay quizzes, I lost it. I lost it. That was another time where I cried actually. I forgot to mention that. I guess there were four times when I cried. Just like the way his eyes welled up and the tear that rolled down his cheek. 
oh my god. Another big moment where Kit Connors' expressions just absolutely floored me was before, after, and during the kiss with Charlie. Because you could see in his eyes, like, this excitement, but this anxiety, joy, and just, like, panic. Like, all of it just, like, wrapped up in his eyes and his expressions. Like, it was so, oh my god, that kid is going places. The next thing I want to talk about is Tao, and how I believe they didn't include or mention the bit in the comic where Tao sort of accidentally outed Charlie and he was talking about Charlie being gay and then someone overheard it and then that's how it sort of got out. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that was ever specifically mentioned. I know that Tao told Elle like, oh, Charlie probably didn't tell me because he was afraid I would accidentally out Nick. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't do that. I still think that Tao's like motivations and his protectiveness of Charlie is very understandable. He sees this kid who Charlie thinks is his friend, but he knows that this kid only hangs out with people who are just awful to both Tao and Charlie. Like, I think he is very reasonably suspicious. I really love that conversation that he has with Nick in the final episode where he's the one who sort of encourages Nick to talk to Charlie and sort of explains Charlie's mindset. I think it was a really nice moment of him kind of coming around to the relationship and being really supportive. Every single moment between Tao and Elle had me just like giddy on the edge of my seat. I love that we're seeing their romance develop so quickly. The moment in the arcade where she looks at him and you see the little like doodle hearts or the flowers, I can't remember. Oh my god! <gasps> the doodles! My favorite moment, hands down, where the doodles are used when Nick tries to hold Charlie's hand. Oh god, okay, I can't think about it without like oh, losing my mind. The light between their palms and the sparks that show up when Nick puts his hand and like hovers it above Charlie's. <gasps> Oh my god, stunning. Beautiful. Just, that's cinema right there. That's poetic cinema. Okay, so there are actually two more things that I really wanted to talk about when it comes to the show that I didn't. I could honestly sit here and talk about the show all day, but we don't have time for that. So instead, I'm just going to mention, one, the fact that I absolutely adored Tara and Nick's friendship and relationship. The gay solidarity between the two of them was just I also just love that part where they call each other like boy I kissed one time, girl I kissed one time. I just think that they get each other because they've known each other for so long because everyone sort of expects them to get together or expects them to, you know, be the sort of stereotypical straight couple. But psych, surprise, they're gay. Their relationship is just so wholesome and I, I hope that we get to see more of it. The other thing I need to talk about because I just I feel like I haven't gushed about Nick and Charlie nearly enough is the hugs. I feel like every time that Nick wanted to like express himself emotionally but felt like he couldn't, he would instead just like hug Charlie so tightly and for so long. The first time when he's over at Charlie's house and he's about to say goodbye and he calls Charlie cuddly, I cannot believe that Charlie or anyone else even entertained the idea that that boy was straight. You can just tell that Nick wants to say more, that he's really sort of coming to terms with his feelings for Charlie, but he can't express that yet. So he just hugs Charlie so tightly. Another moment where this happens is at the bowling alley during Charlie's birthday when Nick overhears Tao and Charlie talking in the bathroom. Nick, you can tell like he just wants to say, I'm sorry that he feels so bad for putting Charlie in this position, even though it's really not like either of their faults. And Nick like hugs Charlie in this moment of like wanting to reassure Charlie that he really does like him that this is like a, a real thing between the two of them but also just because I don't know like he just wants to express his love and he can't really do it with words in that moment so instead he just hugs him. Nick Nelson's love language is physical touch and I think that all the hugging and everything that I just explained like that's my evidence so you can believe me you could not believe me but I'm right. I just love this show man. I love this show. It's gonna be my comfort show from now on. I'm gonna rewatch it all the time. It's going to be a show that I put on like when I'm feeling sick, when I'm feeling down, when I just want to play it in the background while I'm doing other stuff. Like it's just going to be a go-to kind of show for me. I can feel it. I hope that the show has nothing but the greatest success. I hope that we get renewed for season two immediately because I need the Paris gang to actually become the Paris gang and go to freaking Paris. I just think the story of Heartstopper and how it went from like a small webcomic to this like incredible just like franchise and now with the Netflix adaptation like even though I haven't been part of this fandom for that long like 
I think it's an incredible achievement and I feel really proud of everyone who's involved in that. So that is it for me today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Go ahead and let me know what you thought of the show if you have watched it. If you guys want to find me or follow me anywhere else, all those links will be down below. I love you all very dearly and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.